Hello, I'm Pastor Sharon, and I'll be hosting uh, our beloved Isaac. We never knew his real doctrine until today, and so I'll be hearing it for the first time as well. So without any further ado, my brother Isaac. Hi, I'm Isaac Romero with Dallas Storm Ministries with Jose Garcia and Rick Kessler. We're here uh, with our special guest, Sharon. You know, today's sermon is going to be against lukewarm Christianity and judging within the church. So, Pastor Sharon. Turn with me to chapter Psalm chapter 119 verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that might not sin against me. But Pastor Sharon, why don't you preach? Preach that, Sharon. Uh, please refer to me as Pastor Sharon. I would appreciate that. And I know it's a funny name, but my mother gave it to me when I was a child, and my father, of course, listened to every word she said, and uh, even when she passed away, it kind of stuck with me. Pastor Sharon, that's... Pastor Sharon, you can call me that. That's no... that's not a man's name. I know, I know. I couldn't do anything about it, brother. You need to get some spine. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna rebuke you right now. Oh, I didn't know that this was going to happen, folks. I just didn't know. Shall I shut it off, Isaac? Pastor, there honey, are things that are going on within the church. Honey, should I turn it off? Should I, could you bring the Kleenex in here, please? Honey, because I feel like I'm gonna break up any minute. You need to get some spine, sir. There's some things going on within the church that, you know, God's going to hold you accountable for. For the Bible says, and I'm quoting to you the King James Version, For the time is come that judgment shall begin at the house of the Lord. And if it begin first at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Well, amen, brother. That's what we do. That's what we do in our church. But pastor, you preach once they always saved, right? Of course, everyone does, don't they? You know what? Don't you know what Jesus says? You know, this is not on my notes. You know what, Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Enter straight at the straight gate, for straight is a gate, narrow is the way which leads to eternal life. You be there, find it. Broad is a gate which leads to destruction. Now tell me, Pastor, what is Jesus saying by that statement? He's saying to go into the straight and narrow road. I thought that's what we were doing. I, I thought, my wife told me uh, that's what we were doing, and I believe her. But pastor, the truth is, you're telling people all you gotta do is say a prayer, and you know what, that, that's not true. Those verses which I quoted to you, Jesus said, most people are not gonna make it to heaven. Well, you need to repent. You need to stop doing that. Well, how come so many people come to the altar call then? Pastor, it's because you're giving a false doctrine. You're tickling the ears. You need to repent. Don't you know God is going to hold you to a higher standard? So, yes. So why won't you stop doing this? Are you covetous? Do you, are you uh, hungry for money? Well, it's important. That's what Cuddles says. Cuddles is my wife. 
But the Bible says clearly, sir, woe to you pastors who replace my flock for filthy lucre. Well, we're doing all good things with that money. That's all I can tell well, you. Well, what are you doing with that money? Is it against God? Because if it's against the, the Word of God, then you need to repent. Well, if I do good things with the money, isn't that... And if I do it for the Lord, isn't that acceptable? No, because you're doing it for vain glory. And don't you know God is not a God of vain glory? Don't you know that you need to repent? Don't you know that you're not rebuking fornication within the church? You, you know, you see people, you know they're not married, but why don't you rebuke them? Well, then the church would go down. It wouldn't exist anymore. We have maintenance. We have other, we have missionary work. We have Sunday school lessons. We have all these things that we have to keep going. But you know, that's all the flesh. Don't you know God does not care of that? He does not care. You need to repent. You need to warn people. Don't you know what the Bible says to the pastor? They're to be sober, to be of one wife, not to teach, not a striker, not giving in to drunkenness, but pastor, you have more than just one wife. You've been cheating on her. Cuddles, that's not true. It's just not. Could you bring the Kleenex, please? Get it yourself. You okay, need, honey. You need to repent, pastor. If you're doing those things, you know what the Bible says. You can't be the pastor of that church. You need to resign. I, no, I can't resign. I People love me. But you know what? I'll be deserting them. Your approval should be focused more on God. It is focused on God and him every alone. Sunday. And Him alone. You know what? You need to stop appeasing man. I don't appease man. My wife is the only thing I appease. You need to repent. Cuddles is telling me to do the wrong thing? I don't think so. If it's against the word of God, sir, then you need to rebuke her. Well, she can prove everything, and she has. Sir, you need to get some spine. That's the problem with the churches. The men of churches with pastors like yourself who are spineless, feckless, sissy marys, gutless, cowards. Cuddles, he didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. Don't come in here. Don't come in here now. You need to close the door so you can't hear him. You need to get some spine, sir. You need to be the ruler of the house. Don't you know the Bible says that? How can you be the pastor of the church if you're not the ruler of your own house? Well, my, my cuddles is very close to me and uh, we share our ministry together. As a matter of fact, sometimes I let her preach. Don't you know for what 1 Timothy 2.12 says? I usurp not authority. The uh, serpent woman does not to have authority over a man and preach in the church. Don't you know that, Pastor? But why are you doing that? Because every all the women say it was just a custom then and it doesn't apply to today and it kind of seems that way. Don't you know God's word does not change? Yes. And you know what, Pastor, why are you lying? Those that are the part of the ministry to come in, you know, getting drunk. Why are you not rebuking them? And you know what? And you know, they're watching filthy sh television shows. They're watching porn. And you know what? They're watching our movies, but you're not rebuking them. Don't you know what the Word of God says? In Psalm 101, verse 3, turn to me if you have your Bible. It says, evil communication corrupts good manners. And for you lukewarm, spineless Christians, if you're doing those things, if you're doing drugs, if you're fornicating, 
If you're committing homosexuality, you're smoking cigarettes, you're doing all those same things you did before you came to Jesus Christ, you're not truly converted. This pastor I'm talking to has lied to you. No, this pastor, the pastors that tell you just because you said a prayer one day to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, that you're good. But I tell you the truth, if you turn to Philippians 2.12, it says you need to work out your salvation with fear and great trembling. Well, you know something? You're in danger of being excommunicated now. After this, after that, I will give you the tape. It doesn't matter to me because they were all lies. That's what Cuddle says anyway. But, sir, but you're, you're, you're offending me. I'm, I'm offended. As a matter of fact, I can feel myself breaking up. You need to repent, sir. Get some spine, you spineless coward. Sissy Mary Pastor. I didn't know you were going to insult me the whole time. You need to repent. Get some spine. Don't you know Jesus Christ was not spineless or Sissy Mary, a coward or gutless? Don't you know he's the same Jesus who, who uh, rebuked the Pharisees and the scribes because they robbed the people blind? Because they were selling doves? Noah in the markets. You know, the doves that the people had and they were waiting in line, they were better than the doves that the Pharisees and scribes were selling them. And Jesus told them, sir, Behold, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Oh, cuddles, I told you to stay in there. You need to repent, sir. And you know, don't you know that St. Jesus, after he said those things, he overthrew the money, Changers tables and he chased them with the whip. But no, you don't preach about that Jesus. You only preach about the Jesus that's tolerant. Okay, go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. I hope you're gonna wrap this up soon. I'm 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 sick. My stomach is sick. I'm ill again. I just got over it last time. You Where know, you the whole talk? women's Bible study came against me. And I felt terrible, so I had to do what they said. You need to take up your cross and get some spine, sir. You're not to let a woman be well, certain That's authority. very offensive to me, brother. Well, what are you going to do about it, sir? Are you going to repent? Are you going to repent so that we won't have to face the Lord's coming? God made me Judges. like this. God made me you like this. You did it, sir. You're saying God is vile? Is that what you're saying? No, you are. No, God is not vile, sir. Shame on you. Shame on me? Shame on you because you allow all these things to go in the church. All these things that are wicked in God's eyes. And why do you have a gay flag that supports LGBT movement? Oh, now you've gone over the line. Don't you know God the Bible? loves everyone. Don't you know God finds that lifestyle? Love is love. An abomination of the righteous God? Love is love. Turn to me to, to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. We go by the New Testament, brother. I'm rebuking you now. And you, you know say, what? I am a man. I do have a spine. You know, oh, sir. Okay, honey, I'll be right there. Then <laughs> why, sir, are you asking for your wife? Don't you, why can't you be a man and stand up to me yourself? You need a spine, sir. Well, but don't you know God is going to bring judgment upon your church? Like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't you know they had apostate churches even then? And you know, God judged them with fire and brimstone. But no, we only preach that God is tolerant. That's loving, it's merciful, it's forgiving. We only preach that Jesus who loves to die on the cross. We don't preach about the Jesus who's coming with great wrath, coming as King of Kings, Lord of Lord, hair white as snow, 
crown of kings on his head, feet with pillars of fire, he's coming to judge you. Obey not the gospel, as the Bible says. There are enemies of his with fire and brimstone. Don't you know, pastor? A friend of this world is a friend as well as an entity with God. That's James 4. 4-4 four, four, or 4-8. Four, You'll never have a congregation, Brother Isaac. I you don't care, You'll never sir. have a congregation if you continue to act with such rage and anger. This is righteous anger, sir. Don't you know that God slew Son of Gomorrah with righteous anger? Don't you know Jesus rebuked the Pharisees with righteous anger? You generation of vipers! Woe unto you hypocrites! We're Christian, Protestant Christians. Sir, we're, we're blameless in God's eyes. God did it all for us. That's all I know. You'll never have a church. Yeah, you're a loser. You need to repent, You're sir. a loser. You, you will repent, never sir. have a church. Don't you know Paul says in Romans, he rebukes the church. He says, shall we sin? This is because of our grace. God forbid. Have you ever read Romans chapter 6? Of course I did. Why do you ignore it? Because we are told to rightly divide the word of God. And cuddles my wife, and don't say anything about her. <laughs> I will protect her. She said that's where you divide it. Because now women, because men are the way they are, women are taking over. And maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. You know Do the, you know what's on God's mind? I don't know what's on God's mind. You know the, don't you know the word of God does not change, sir? Don't you know that cowards will be the first ones to go to hell? That's you. Yeah. Because you don't rebuke sin. You love the women to usurp authority, which is against God's word. Don't you know that? I do. Could you continue and can we can wrap this up? Don't you know, sir? Well, well, why would you repent? Why would you rebuke your wife and get some spine? Because, because after you leave, we'll have a conversation and she knows what she's talking about. She went to the same seminary as me. Are you gonna cry after this, sir? I have already and I held back. Don't you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, it says, Be not deceived, brothers and sisters, for the unrighteous shall inherit the kingdom of God. It says, For neither liars, nor thieves, nor murderers, those are feminine, homosexuals, which is what you do. You allow homosexuals to preach from the pulpit. We. Fornicators. It, it is now by the Junkers. Supreme Court legal. It's legal in the United States. We invite everybody into the church and now they're taking leadership roles and sometimes they do better than even, you know, a heterosexual. Don't you know God does not honor that? No, I don't know that. And you know what? Why do you have a lot of same-sex marriage within the church? Why do you not rebuke it? Because I'm a former homosexual until I met Cuddles. Don't you know, sir, that is still against God's word? Don't you know God does not change? So why will you not change? I have changed as soon as I married Cuddles. Have you repented of your sins? Have you repented of your drunkenness? Have you repented of cheating on your wife? I know how they feel, those homosexuals. I know how they feel, those lesbians. I Have know. You repented of appeasing man rather than appeasing God. The truth is, you have not. And you don't you have you read the book of First Peter? So you Chapter say. Chapter three, which says, you know, destruction shall become upon the false teachers, false prophets shall come upon them swiftly. Are you calling me a false teacher? Yes. My goodness, I gotta cut cut off. I told you, get back inside. I'll calm you and down. And you know what? Shame on you, Cuddles. Shame on you for preaching 
where there's men and women. Shame on you! How dare you preach from the pulpit! How dare you! How dare you roll over your husband! Don't you know Proverbs 5 5 says, and the rebellious woman is eternal destruction? How dare you and your husband support the LGBT movement? How dare you? Well, you give me a strong rebuttal, Cuddles. Cuddles, put the broom down. Put the broom down now, okay? And leave the room. Leave Isaac Colone, he's almost done. Come here, Cuddles. Give me a rebuttal. What's your rebuttal? For proving you being a pastor in the church of men and women. This world is finished with the patriarchy. It's time for the matriarchy to take over. Don't you know God is going to hold you accountable, Cuddles? Don't you? Haven't you read 1 Timothy 2 12? Nothing's happened to me. As a matter of fact, I married a, a good, decent, obedient man. Let me tell you, you married a spineless, feckless, sissy married man. You know what? You need a room man of God who will set you straight. Don't you know what 1 Corinthians chapter 14 through 34 it says? Well, read it because it's going to be your last scripture. I'll read it. And you know what? You can do whatever to me you will because I'm going to stand on God's You're going to be excommunicated after this. It says. You heretic. I'm going to read it to you. In fact, I'm going to read 34 through 36 of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. I'm open to it before you. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, for they commanded to be under obedience, as saith the law. But you, cuddles, you preach, and you choose to live in rebellion. You choose to ignore that verse of the Bible and cut it out. Why is that? See, you have no answer because you know the truth. And you choose to rebel. God's going to hold you accountable. Don't you know that judgment shall begin at the house of the Lord first? You're, you're changing, brother. <laughs> you are changing. The Isaac I knew was so quiet in his, his seat in church and gave his tithe every week. And we you know, need that tithe. So... I'm going to excommunicate you, but only for a week. But you know what? It's not me excommunicating, excommunicating Jesus Christ. You know what? By the way, your candlestick is removed from your church because you support the LGBT movement. You support abortion, which is an abomination of righteous God. You support all things God hates. You support gay marriage. And you know what? You preach sermons that tackle, tickle people's ears and you know what you don't warn people of their sins therefore the candlestick has been removed for you Sharon could you ask him out please I've had enough could you please ask this man out and I'm going to quote to you the next two verses on 1st Corinthians chapter 14 I just read 34 to read 35 36 you know what? And you lukewarm Christians, those of you who think that you said a prayer, you're good. You know what? Just because your pastors told you that you receive cheap grace, you need to have a grace which gives you the power to repent. You repent of your drug addiction, alcohol addiction, homosexuality, fornication, your porn, your TV adultery, your sports adultery, your lying, your stealing. You who need to told you I was a lesbian? The Word of God says it. The Word of God has brought conviction to your heart, sir. The we have God turned around. Judgment. Me and Sharon have turned around. And and he's he's forgotten what he was, and I forgot what I was, and we're happily married now. So there. You know what? You need to repent. You need to take down the LGBT flag. You know what? You need to stop allowing same-sex marriage. You need to resign as a pastor. I'm not the pastor. I'm the pastor's wife. But I have a lot of power. You know what? Who cares about your power? 
Your power is not going to matter when you go to die and go before the throne of God. God's going to tell you, you know what? Why did you allow same-sex marriage? Why did you accept abortion and support Planned Parenthood? Why did you support the LBG movement? Why did you not rebuke sin and allow fornication in the church? Because you allowed these things, if you did not repent, the judgment shall be greater for you than others. I hope I never see you again, Brother Isaac. You're no longer my brother now. Please you know, leave the home. And you know what? Those of you are changing this man's church and other apostate churches who don't warn you and support all these abominable, wicked things in God's eyes, you need to leave the church. If they're telling you to give your tithe and they're not warning you to, pre to repent, then you need to leave and get away from those churches and repent of your wicked ways. This is Brother Isaac signing off.